What's up guys, Joe here. Welcome back to my channel and today we are back with the Uno X career following up our Giro d'Italia fourth place with Tobias and today we are building up to the Tour de France. We also have the Tour of Slovenia which hopefully should be a really fun build up race before the Tour de France. We also have the national championships before heading to the big one. And the Dauphiné has a very interesting set of stages if we take a look. Uh, a hilly couple of opening stages, fairly difficult. We have a hilly time trial on stage four. Stage five, it says it's flat but we do have um, a plethora of climbs in the second half of the stage and the final three stages are full of mountains and that is where this race is going to be won or lost. Anyway, I've actually played the first four stages off camera. Let's take a look at how we've got on so far. As I was about to start the race, I noticed some unfortunate news. Alexander Kristoff with an injury to his Achilles tendon and he seems to be in a bit of trouble. So I decided to take him out the roster completely and we are now without a sprinter throughout the Dauphiné. So it's going to make the race a little more difficult for us but we definitely need to look after Christoph's health rather than focus on the criterium to Dauphiné. Anyway, we do have a little lull in the action. So Pete Mogensen tried to launch something. Matthew Vanderpool and Julian Alaphilippe had the same idea but now we come into the Flamme Rouge. It is going to be a reduced bunch sprint Skelmosa and Anders Garcet going for the line but no one can deny Matthew van der Poel who starts off in winning fashion at the Dauphiné. We did actually have some minor time gaps if you take a look lower down the standings right there. I didn't notice anyone super meaningful but stage two is going to be a difficult one. We have a mountain top finish essentially and Skelmosa has been caught out too far to the back of the group struggling to keep up with the rhythm and he needs some support we're really trying to press back into the group we're just about getting dropped getting back in every second and we need Pete Mogensen now to drop back and help out uh, our man at Skelmosa and if anyone attacks off the front I'm screwed we certainly cannot follow from this position it's a minus one day as well for Skelmosa and we're just about going to crawl back onto the back of the group literally just about we do have some attacks though under the five kilometer to go banner Skelmosa literally clinging on for dear life here if we're dropped already we know we'll be nowhere in the GC but um, we're going to have to settle for a sprint in the second group on the road and Primoz Roglic shows his form winning stage two of the Dauphiné ahead of I think Julian Alaphilippe and Patrick Conrad. So Roglic does get a small time gap and Skelmosa is officially classified in the second group on the road. So that's perfect for us as we head to stage three. Looks very much like a sprint stage to me. We do have a slight uphill finish to the line though which we do need to be aware of and of course we don't really have a sprinter at this year's race. So Jonas Widerberg, Nicholas Larson and Anders Scarsett are going to be the riders competing for victory with Scarsett our leader today and now Nicholas Larson hoping to drop off Anders Scarsett at the front of the race. He is in the prime position right now. We have Israel on our wheel and into the final kilometre the Flamme Rouge is up ahead. Larson kicks. Scarsett tries to leave it a little late knowing the uphill finish and Gaviria is going to come around and surely defeat us today but no and the scar set is going to outlast him, come past and win stage three of the Dauphiné by far the biggest victory of Anders Scarset's career. And again, we did have some time gaps today. Notable riders, I think Danny Martinez and Tobias Foss losing time in the GC. And then the final stage, which we played off camera, is the time trial. And Skelmosa, a pretty good time trialist, unlike all of our other GC options. We can see Pogaccia crossing the line, trying to stay with Pippo Ganna. Remco Evnepoel as well. He was very close to Ghana. Certainly one of the best riders to finish so far. And Skelmosa, it's only a plus one day. Not too bad though. Uh, better than the minus one we had in the mountains earlier in the race. And Skelmosa provisionally goes inside the top ten. So that's certainly not too bad a result. Matthew Van Der Poel though, trying to win the stage. Potentially he's seconds in the GC as things stand. Nope, he's nowhere near. But Primoz Roglic is the man to look out for. If you're Pippo Ganna, but no, Roglic has to settle for third place. However, he currently does lead the Dauphiné and is looking pretty much in control of the race. So that leaves us in a pretty good position heading into stage five where Fernando Gaviria 
is the stage favourite. I'm not sure how we're going to go about winning this one. We'll give it a go though. And I did try to join today's breakaway to challenge the KOM jersey holder, Tony Gallopan. That's not happening though. Jumbo Visma in control on the front already. So it's been a tricky stage so far and Naira Quintana has fallen foul to that. He crashed and is now out the back for good at this year's Dauphiné. Most of our guys are staying in a decent position and the tempo is pretty high right now. Oh, but now we have a really big moment because among the many crashes we've had today, Primoz Roglic has gone down, Thibaut Pino as well. And of course, we are going to have the full Jumbo Visma team surely sitting up for Primoz, but he is so far back. So the gap to the group featuring Primoz Roglic to the front of the race is now over two minutes they are so far up the road and like i alluded to i don't think roglic is getting back in here and it is ue coming to the front to tempo so we only have three kids go and mogensen is trying to make this difficult i think roglic is still behind i'm not sure how the time gaps are going to look today but mogensen doing a lovely job leading out skomos the Jensen. let's go for the stage sprint behind as well skomosa trying to hold off matthew van der poel after this corner of course there is no chance of that MVDP wins stage five. Skelmosa though, a strong showing today. And are we going to get any time gaps? Yes, indeed we are. The first person to lose time is 96th place Primoz Roglic, the former leader of the race that now goes to Remco Evnepoel. How unlucky for Primoz. He is now 1 minute 23 down. It's going to take some comeback for him. Anyway, the first big GC day occurs on stage six in the mountains. The first of three days, Tade and Primoz are the guys to watch, particularly Primoz after that disappointing fall. We just need to try and stay with them. And we did manage to join today's breakaway. Luckily, we have Torsten Train in the group, Galapan here, Tusfeld and Esteban Chavez, a, of course, very good climber. So we are going to try and take some KOM points here with Train away from Tony Galapan. Can we do that? No, we cannot. We ran out just before the line. Bit of a shame. Up to nine points, third place for the moment. And so Pippo Ganna and world champion Mark Hershey are going to catch Torsten Train from that breakaway. He can now support our guys because our other domestiques are really struggling suddenly. Okay, I didn't quite expect this. We have attacks. Nielsen Paulus attacking Emmerich Mass to the front. Ben Tullet as well. And look at Skelmosa, guys. He is really struggling with the tempo. He's even getting dropped momentarily. So many riders cracking right now. Danny Martinez. We have Parapentra as well, but we are still so far back. We need to make a move towards the front of the race. The race is going up the road as Remco Evnepoel in the yellow jersey has cracked as well, but we are starting to struggle. We've outclimbed Remco here. Can we get to this group of Primoz Roglic, which seems to have completely stopped towards the top? That's perfect for us then. We will come to the front of the race and why not sweep up those KOM points? And of the riders who have been dropped, surely Julian Alaphilippe is the most notable. He is a long way back and definitely not getting back on. And apparently no one really wants to do anything until we hit the foot of the final climb. 8k to go. Let's try and hold on. And so only 3k to go. 2.5k to go. We're still holding on to the group. Let's try and move up now though because Pog is right to the front. So is Nielsen Paulus. I think we have the energy to really try and attack this final section of climbing. And hopefully Remco who has now re overtaken us will be reeled in again by us right here but only one kid's go we're starting to struggle and we're not able to follow at the moment as ver completely blocks us off that is um not particularly kind of him we must admit let's go up to 95 i think ramco is going to be overtaken by us again and probably lose the yellow jersey because primoz roglic is in ridiculously good form right now we just couldn't keep up right there um but hopefully we get the same time as these guys at least well, I've got to say that stage was a little disappointing. 32 seconds back in the end, not quite as disappointing as it was for Remco, who loses his yellow jersey. We are now seventh place in the GC. We're still there, but it is Tade who moves into yellow. Although I must say Primoz Roglic looks in unbeatable form right now. He's my favourite still to win this race, despite him being a minute down. However, the ascent of Le Plan today, and we have the Col de Pre as well. But Le Plan is, of course, the final climb, and that is where 
the big time gaps will be decided. This is going to be a crucial day. So I think again, let's try and just pack the breakaway with as many riders as we can today. Not the race day we hope for with Skelmosa, but not to worry. He's, we're holding off on his fitness peak, of course, for the Tour de France. And ultimately, I've managed to get two riders, Mogensen and Train, into the breakaway. So two of our better climbers here at the race, but the likes of Chicone, so much stronger than our guys. But already on the first descent, we are being forced to use our domestiques from the breakaway. Skelmos, again, getting caught far too far back in the group. Um, and yeah, we're just getting blocked off by riders who are struggling more than us. Torsten Train, though, will be our final domestique. Hopefully, we still have him at the top of this climb. Apparently, though, that was just a pipe dream. We are already alone. Just 43 riders are here. Oh, and would you believe it? Would you believe it? A puncture for Skelmos uh, leaves him out the back of the group. And I really cannot see us getting back in here unless the tempo completely dies which it hasn't. But what a fighter we have in Skelmosa. 3k to go until the top and we are back just about. And we are going to survive somehow. What a rider. All right then, it's Biniam Gamay leading us onto the plan. And I think our best tactic is just to try and hold on for as long as possible and then work our way up. Uh, because I can't see us holding on to the rhythm for too long, to be honest. So 11k still to go. Look at our energy. We are cooked. We're going to lose heaps of time, I'm sure. There we have it then, the first attacks. And it's Thibaut Pino. Attack to Thibaut Pino on Le Plan. But, I mean, Joao Almeida is there to work for Pog. What a team UEE have. And there you go, 7k to go. We have been dropped officially. Uh, Pino has been caught, so hopefully we can crawl back in. No, because Roglic is on a mission. He has a minute to gain back. Can he do it? So we're losing heaps of time, but we're not the only rider to do so because Primoz Roglic has attacked everyone. He has about 30 seconds to the group of Tale Pogaccia, a fairly big group to be fair. Does anyone have anything left? Nairo Man potentially, maybe Michael Storer, maybe Emric Mass. Is Roglic going to be denied here at the last? Oh my word, I think he is. He's going to be uh, Gino Marda, exactly what he did to Gino Marda and Emric Mass. Just about steals it from Primoz Roglic. We're going to lose about two minutes with Skelmosa. The lead of this crazy race changes hands again. And it's Emric Mass laying down the gauntlet ahead of the Tour de France. Tade drops to second. Roglic now up to fourth place. Whereas Skelmosa has fallen outside the top ten. We were really unlucky with that puncture. But to be honest, I don't think we'd have been there had we uh, not been unlucky with the puncture prior to the final climb. Just not good enough today. And I guess it would be good to actually show you guys the fitness peaks. You can see Skelmosa still some way away, but 20 days until the Tour de France, he should be there pretty much as the race begins. So I think we've timed it really well. Anyway, before then, we have another Queen stage. I think this could be the Queen stage. Massive day in the mountains again. And maybe a chance for us to at least move into the top 10. And so our only option is to go all out. And that is exactly what I am attempting to do right here. Julian Alaphilippe trying to join today's breakaway. But we have five riders here. Skelmosa and a Domestique are the only riders left behind of the Movistar control peloton. Let's just go all out and try and attack the day. So what's my plan from here, you may ask. We have three minutes currently in the breakaway. We're not going to beat Danny Martinez. We're not going to beat Julian Alaphilippe for the stage victory. Those guys are here. Instead, we're just going to try and gain a tactical advantage by having as many riders as possible up the road and we'll try an early move with Skelmosa up to those guys. Let's see if it works. And I mean, Movistar have taken it very easy to start. You can't really blame them. Larson, Abrahamson and Scarset have all been dropped for us. That's okay. We can use them maybe as stepping stones or domestiques for Skelmosa. We still train and Mogensen at the head of the race. To be fair, it turns out that Torsten Train is going to be one of the strongest riders in the breakaway. Only Pools Martinez and Alaphilippe are still here with him. He is only eighth place in the KOM jersey. Mogensen has been dropped now as well. And Vidberg, we're going to have to use him to help Skelmosa. And okay, this is where I was considering an attack. And Fernando Gaviria laying down the rhythm from the foot of this climb. It's 11 kilometers in length. Certainly not the most difficult of the stage, but Skelmos is not going to win by climbing to victory on the final climb. Instead, we know we need to make it tough and uh, just mix up the racing a little bit. 
um, rather than just having a pure race from the foot of one mountain to another. And so this could be a good moment to be honest. Videberg is done. Let's try and put in a dig with Skelmo so we can have Mogensen up to 85. Skelmo to get in his wheel and pull him up this mountain. And so what is the reaction to this? No major reaction from the off. Garcia Cortina not even increasing the rhythm. Okay, we're off. All right, but we still have two minutes to the front of the race, which is where Torsten Train sits. And Mogensen is desperately trying to pull Skelmosa there. But now we have a rhythm by Mark Kershey and UAE behind. So with Torsten Train still at the front of the race, I think Skelmosa has now been caught. Time to give up on that idea and probably give Torsten Train the chance he deserves. And I mean, Train is also now second place in the provisional KOM standings. Could he win the jersey? And so Train remains up the road in the supercharged group with three world class riders. Four and a half minutes and we're ready to take them on. Surely he couldn't snag a stage victory here. So 6k to go in the climb and the peloton are working their way back in. Mogensen is almost done. I may need to try and attack with Train. Behind UAE continue to work. Alaphilippe is gone and Train has been dropped by Pools and Danny Martinez. We'll try and claw our way back. And there's a bit of looking around in the main group until Primoz Roglic attacks. I simply cannot follow. Tade can. Let's maybe try and follow a little with Skelmosa then. Train is working his way past Danny Martinez as well. But these two, the Slovenian duo, are just going to be too strong, I'm afraid. So at the top of the climb, it's Primoz Roglic who crosses first, then Pog, then Martinez, and then Train. But he has only minor time on Emmerich Mass and the main peloton behind. And so Danny Martinez has been dropped in the descent by Tade and Emmerich Mass is working so, so hard to try and get his yellow jersey back. We need to try and take advantage of the situation. All right, and four Ks to go. I think Train is going to have to work for Skelmosa here. We have more riders up the road. Again, though, it's Pog and Rog seemingly coming out on top and Common Train try and bring them in for Skelmosa. Only 2K to go now, though. Um, and I think Roglic may have this one at the head of the race. Pog still on his wheel and we are ready to launch with Skelmosa into the final kilometre. Let's try and go a little early under the Flamme Rouge, but up the road, it's Roglic versus Pogaccia. No surprises there. Skelmosa comes in for a very strong third place, but Primoz Roglic wins the final stage of the Dauphiné in what is going to be a very close final GC. And one rider who won't be winning it is Emmerich Mass, who loses the yellow jersey on the final stage. So a strong ending to the race with the only other rider bar Pog and Rock to finish in the lead time today. Emmerich Mass losing the race at the final hurdle to Tade Pogaccia. Roglic, of course, second. He was unlucky due to that crash, really losing the race. We do sneak into the top 10 in what is a fair overall performance from Skelmosa. And so what has this taught us? I think it's taught us that the Tour de France is going to be so tough. It's going to be so tough, but we are definitely aiming for a podium place. We're going to try, guys. You've got to dream big. Anyway, we get a chance to head to our second Tour de France preparation race in Slovenia, the home of Rog and the home of Pog. We do have some interesting climbs here um, and some stages for the sprinters as well. So it should be a fun one. And no surprises, I can already see that Pog is here as well. He is doing both the Dauphiné and the Tour of Slovenia. Looking at our team though, we have the likes of Magnus Kortz, Marcus Hulegaard, Captain Price, Johansson as well. We have a very well-rounded team, I would say. Frustrating for us to see one of our stage contenders, Soren Rojgold, on a minus three day. No chance for him. But um, a quick look at the overall start list. Really fun little race with Pog, Almeida, Alaphilippe and Remco as well. Kelderman here too. Nairo Man should be really, really fun when I think about it. Literally any number of our riders so far could have won the stage, but they've all had shocking race day conditions. Magnus Court is by far our strongest rider to start yet. And here we go, 500 meters left. Where can he finish? Maybe gone a little too early to the line. It's the top five. And so currently Joao Meda holds the lead and can the home favorite Tade Pagacha steal it? No, he cannot. Nowhere near. 
All right then, that probably goes down as a fairly uneventful start to the race. 13th place with Magnus Court is our best finisher, but we have plenty of riders in a good position. And now this one really suits Magnus Court on paper. If you ask me, we have a climb to hopefully drop any pure sprinters. And then of course, hopefully he can deliver a winning sprint in the final. And so the climb has begun. I do have three riders on the front, but to be honest, they just need to hold rhythm. I don't think there's any really dangerous pure sprinters here. Um, and the likes of Mike Tunison probably can get over this climb anyway, so uh, probably not worth trying to absolutely hammer it. Nonetheless, if we can get rid of riders like Felix Gross, that is only going to help. However, quick step, always trying to throw something into the mix, and Mikhail Honore has attacked. I wonder if it's worth trying to follow him. DSM are chasing anyway, and I'm also wondering if we can have Werenschgold as part of today's lead out. He is struggling quite a lot. So 3K to go, Werenschgold up to 90, but Honore still holds the lead. What a ride by the quick step rider. We have to rely on Marcus Hulagard today to do some form of lead out for Magnus Court under the flam rouge. Here we go. Let's try and kick early. Hopefully Honore is struggling. Milano though looks very, very quick to the line. Finally, Honoré is caught, but Nils Ekhoff is going to take a victory and we have to settle for third position. Uh, we would have loved the stage, but Nils Ekhoff is pretty fast, to be fair to him. We do have some minor time gaps, to be fair. The likes of Kasper Askren losing time, which could be quite pivotal in the GC. Although I say that, Askren definitely one of the riders who will surely struggle on today's stage. Are we about to see a poggy madness? I think we are. <laughs> It's all going on here early. Tade has just crashed. He is trying to make his way back in. We have a couple of other riders who have crashed as well. I wonder if Tade could actually struggle to get back in to the main group. Anyway, I have managed just about to join the breakaway with Johansson. It was tough, but he is there. You can actually see De Kern and Quickstep are pretty excited about the fact that Tade is currently behind. And wow, Quickstep have done it. The Pog party is over in Slovenia. He will not be winning this race. Oh, and it's karma. It's huge karma for Quickstep because Remco Evenepoel is not only out of the race, he's out of the race because he's going to withdraw from the Tour of Slovenia. We also have Michael Stora. We also have Sergio Hagita behind. Oh, that is such unfortunate news for Remco Evenepoel. And he is surely going to miss the Tour de France if he's badly injured. But anyway, this Tour of Slovenia has been so funky already with so many strange things happening. Pog crashing and drops. Remco now out of the race entirely. Could we have a surprise winner uh, maybe in Magnus Court? But we've just seen an early attack. Who was it from? It was Jai Hindley attacking and Quintana is working to try and bring him in. Anyway, for Magnus Court, we're now in the second group on the road with Caratero and Bookman. Ahead, we have Kelderman, Almeida, Quintana, Marco Brenner and Jai Hindley with Court just chasing on. Ver has been dropped already. He was top 10 at the Dauphiné. Alaphilippe has gone as well. This race is crazy. But now with Bookman, with Hindley and Kelderman, surely it's up to Bora Alperson to work and they oblige right now. I'm going to try and just roll across the line first there with Magnus Court at that intermediate sprint. Steal those points. All right, so as soon as we hit the climb, it is Nairo Man attacking. Brenner tries to follow. We still have Kelderman and Bookman here with Almeida and Caratero. Everyone else is gone. This race is crazy, man. And Magnus Court is doing literally everything in his power to stay with these guys. And somehow he does stay with Almeida and Bookman. Brenner and Quintana, I think, are going to be caught again just before the final climb. What a stage this is. More drama. More drama because Marco Brenner has crashed. So unlucky for the young German on for one of the best performances of his young career so far and he has crashed at one of the worst moments as well. And so the final ascent begins. Kelderman is still here to work for Bookman. Brenner is back, but he's going to go straight away. Surely we couldn't steal a stage victory, could we? All right, and there we go again. Quintana and Bookman this time on the attack and Nairo Man counter attacks Bookman straight away. We're going to try and crawl up ourselves. Maybe as about 72. See if we can maybe recapture Nairo Man, but he looks on a different level today. So first step is getting to Bookman's wheel, but look at the gap. 
to Nairo Quintana. We will just about, I think, get to Bookman's wheel there. But Nairo, man, is so far ahead. Nairo Quintana absolutely streaks away to essentially win the Tour of Slovenia. Look at the gap he has back to our second on the road. Joao Almeida making a late comeback as well. We'll switch maybe wheels to him. Actually, we'll stay with Emmanuel Bookman. Sprint to the line. Can we maybe snag second place in an epic stage today? I think we might just have to settle for third behind Emmanuel Bookman. But this was an absolute epic. That stage was an absolute epic. I can't remember seeing something like that on PCM. What a stage and to see Naira Man come out on top, always enjoyable. Magnus Court though, with a superhuman performance to finish with Almeida Bookman and uh, of course behind Quintana. Tadej Pogacar, I'm not even sure where he finished. In the end, he was 15 and a half minutes down in 44th place and further Remco Evenepoel exits the race. Let's take a look at the severity of his injury. It's a broken rib. He may be back for the tour. It's a short-term injury. GC Wise, though, we're now third place. Over a minute and a half, though, behind Nairo Man. By the way, I can only apologise if the frames dropped a little bit through that final stage. It looked like they were, but um, I couldn't quit and lower the graphics or anything along those lines. The stage was way too good for that. Anyway, stage four for the sprinters. Maybe Magnus Court could even win this one. All right, so 5k to go in today's sprint. I think 4k is the moment Jimmy Johansson is going to come to the front. We have a fairly big lead-out train compared to what I usually go for. Usually I'm going for just three or four riders in total. We had five at first today, and I can immediately uh, immediately see, sorry, Branch Gold is struggling a little with the tempo, and we're blocked in a little by UET Memorates. Branch Gold blocked in as well. Court Nielsen under the Flam Rouge going for the line. Can we come back and win this one? It's going to be close. I think Nils Ekhoff just about has us today. It's a runner-up position. Without Nils Ekhoff here, I think the race would have been a lot more successful for us. Nonetheless, Magnus Court really showing his versatility and his pre-Tour de France form. Moving now up to third place with the bonus seconds there. And also, we're just behind Ekhoff in the sprinter's jersey as well. So, 15 kilometers of time trial will conclude the race. Surely, Nairo Quintana has enough of a buffer to hold on to the overall lead. Maybe we can snag a win with this man or even this man right here. And so it's Jimmy Hansen in great form for us today and he does take the early lead of the race. So Werench Gold on a decent run as well. Johansson still in the lead with that early time and uh, Werench Gold into the top five. Oh yes, here we go guys. It's a plus five day for Magnus Court and could we even catch Nairo Quintana here on this stage. It would be lovely, wouldn't it? Tade laying down a marker, by the way, showing that his crash doesn't mean he's out of form for the tour. So the riders, we really need to keep an eye on here. By the way, using a lot of red early are Emmanuel Bookman and the two guys behind us. But we are first at the first time check, just one second ahead of Tade provisionally. Let's make sure we don't run out of red, managing things quite nicely, gaining a lot of time on Joao Almeida. I'm intrigued to see where Nairo Man is. Let's take a look. He is 26 seconds down. So we even have Emmanuel Bookman in our sights as we approach the finish line. What an exciting time trial we have today. Bookman finishes about 45 seconds down. Can we win the stage with Magnus Court Nielsen? Yes, we can. We defeat Tade on the TT bike. What a performance. And I think that should be enough for us to claim second in the GC. It is. And we need about a minute and a half plus to Nairo Man. I don't think that's going to happen. Let's just check. To be sure, Nairo Quintana does hold on to win the Tour of Slovenia. That was not how I expected this race to go. What a race in Slovenia. Tade denied a stage victory by the inform Magnus Court Nielsen, who rises to second place in the GC. Nairo Quintana with that superhuman performance on the GC day in the mountains secures the victory, but we also take home the sprinting jersey as well. That race was awesome. Tade now will have some making up to do in the GC at the Tour de France and Remco might not even be there. Anyway guys, the next one will be a short national championships day. We'll try and go for some jerseys, defend both our road race titles, maybe claim our first time trial title as well before we head to the Tour de France in the following episode. Plus I hope you guys enjoyed, smash that like button if you did as always, hit subscribe to the channel if you're new and I will see you guys in the next one.